What's going on everybody, James here from Artificial Entertainment, and welcome back to another episode in our Unreal Engine multi-weapon series. In this one, we're going to be taking a look at a few different tweaks um, for the code, just some small stuff, as well as um, a camera trick that I want to show you guys um, that does really help with like a third-person perspective. So it's similar to like the camera style of God of War, um, the newest one, not the uh, originals, although I think the originals are the same too, but... Anyways, so let's go ahead. We're going to open up our BP third person character and we're going to set our first checks. So the main thing that we want to do is that we don't want to be able to actually grab anything if we don't have anything. So we can pull these back here and we're going to put a branch on each one. I'm going to put it a little, for, a little forward so that way we have enough space. And then we'll hook start it up into each one of these branches. And so long as the condition that we're going to set is true, it can go through. But if it's not, we don't want it to do anything. So set it up just like that. Now, what we can do to make this easy for ourselves is we can look for the validation check that we set up um, for the actual interaction. So we can find the rifle, see if it's valid, find the sword, the pistol, all that good stuff. We're going to take this, copy it. And again, this is off the um, input action for interact where we're going and adding, you know, all that good stuff. We're going to take that and we're going to put it right over here. So we'll just find some empty space here and control D and we'll take these one at a time. So we've got sword. We're going to take sword and make sure that this is valid and then pistol and rifle. So we can grab this and rifle. Boom. So as we just put the return values right into here like so. So this way, if we don't have a sword, if we don't have a pistol, or if we don't have a rifle, it's not going to allow us to be able to set that, oh, we want to use this weapon. Well, you know, because if we don't have it, we don't want to try and use it. So now the next thing that I want to show you guys is that camera trick. Because right now, if we go and hit play, I have a blend space set up in the non-weaponized version, but it's not really using it because of the fact that, well, it can't. So we're going to set it up so that way when we're still, we're going to have the ability to rotate our camera without our char character moving. But if we're moving, we're going to use um, the rotation of the movement. So, and this is the only thing I like using event tick for, just so you guys know. So we'll grab our event tick here. And the only reason why I like to do it with event tick is because I've tried it a bunch of other ways and I just don't get the right timing with it. Um, I've tried to put it off of the camera. I've tried to put it off of the movement input. It just, it doesn't really work. So it's just easier to do it this way. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go over to our movement input here and we're going to get the value of X, pull off, promote to a variable. And the value of X is left and right. So we're going to go left slash right movement. And we'll put that there and then we'll take the value of Y, do the same thing, promote to a variable. And this one's going to be forward slash back movement. This way we know exactly what each one is referencing. And then we'll take triggered and we'll hook these up just like this. Now we also want to highlight these two and control D to duplicate them because we want to hook this off of canceled and completed to set it back to zero. The reason why is because now we can go to the event tick and we're going to take the left right movement, get it and get the forward and back movement as well. And we're going to look for if both of these are not equal to zero. So if they're equal to zero, they're, then we're not moving, right? If they're not equal to zero, then we are moving. And we don't really care if it's left, right, or forward or back. So we can hook both of these up with an or boolean. Because we don't want it to be if they're both not equal to zero. We just want if either one is. If they both are, cool. But it only needs to be one. And then we can add a branch here. Hook up the execution from the event tick. And hook this up into here. Now... We'll grab our component for the character movement and we'll pull off and we'll use controller desired rotation. We want to get set use controller desired rotation. And we're going to plug this off of true and false. So we're just duplicating it and plugging it into false. Now what we want to do though is under false, we want to set it to true and true, we keep it to false. Because now what this will do if we compile and save and hit play, minimize here, you'll see that I can move around, right? There's no issues, but the second that I start moving we now have this and it uses the blend space oh it's not using the blend space what did i do okay so that's what i had um so i, I had the um orient rotation and movement checked and these are actually backwards so if true is going to be true false is going to be false um when i done it in the past i actually realized that i used the equal not the not equal so that's why i had it backwards but now we get this and then it rotates and uses the appropriate directional movement. 
Now, obviously, the movement's probably a little fast for what these motions actually allow for, but it still gives me the same kind of directionality that I would want. So there were some weird things that happened in the blend space there. Um, I'm going to investigate and see what's going on there, but that's to do with the blend space. Um, so I think I just set something up improperly. But overall, we have now the ability to switch weapons, be able to get our characters. And what we'll do is, um, just because I want to show you guys here, we'll go to the BP third person character. We'll take the line trace that's happening, turn the draw debug type to none, hit play. And now you can see we've got full movement on our character. Grab our AK, grab us a sword, and grab us a pistol. Pistol. Rifle. Sword. And this is all single key press. Now if I press the sword key again, stores it back, and puts me back into my default state. Now the animations I'm using um, for the pistol... And I believe the sword also. Oh, nope. Um, yeah, so the, the store is, is root motion. So I have a couple of root motion animations that I am using. Um, and that's realistically just because I do like root motion. But yeah. And now we have the ability. So now if we don't have an active weapon, we're not going to actually go and try and play the draw weapon animations. All right. So the next thing is, is we want to make sure to also reset the information. Now, this is something that realistically I did add um, here. But I will just delete it and I'll show you guys. So on our detected objects custom event, this is the event that we made in the uh, character BP information video. Um, as we can see, we're going off of true setting the information, but we have nothing resetting our information for the t t uh, detected object. Now, this isn't really something that's going to cause a lot of issues because it's always going to update when a new item is detected. But it can sometimes make it so that way this old saved information could override and you could accidentally like walk away and then press a button and it'll do something with that old saved information. So to be able to fix this, we just go into the blueprint here and we're going to get the uh, detected item info. And we're just going to drag in the set node and plug it in off of false with nothing hooked into it. This way it'll just reset itself because if we split the struct bin here just so I can show you. The detected item weapon class is none, the item weapon name is none, and the detected item info actor reference is also blank. So this means that this will allow it if we don't detect anything, so if we're not seeing anything, our line trace isn't detecting an object, it's going to go ahead and reset that item. So just want to make sure to throw that in there as well. I should have gone over this in the character BP information, but I figured since we're going over all the different changes and things that we got to do just to fine tune some things, I'll go over um, and make sure to put this part in. That's it for this one, guys. It was just a really quick kind of go over fixing that uh, first validation check as well as adding in the uh, nice little camera component here. So if you guys have any questions or issues, let me know. And in the next part of the video series, we're going to be going into dealing damage with all of these. So that's going to be the fun part. So I hope you guys are ready for that and I hope you're enjoying the series so far. That's going to close out for this video. But as always, guys, stay animated.